I've been teaching, it's kind of amazing, time flies. I calculated this at 17 years. So I started teaching in the States, in Pittsburgh, in the 1997-98 uh, school year. And I came up to McMaster at the end of 2005. So my first term here was term two, uh, the 2006 school year. I teach two undergrad courses. One is um, PNB 2XB3, which is a, a neuroscience course, neuroanatomy and neurophysiology. Um, and then I teach a course called Psych 4KK3, which is Bayesian inference. It's a cool statistical inference method. Okay, so one thing I do is humor to uh, keep student interest. So, um, uh, and, and also just to illustrate that teaching, like learning, even though it's a lot of hard work, it should be really fun. So, um, one thing I'm known for, especially in my neuroscience classes, are puns. So I'll begin each lecture with a pun. So like if we're studying the somatosensory system, for example, I might say I want to put you in touch with some really interesting information today. I want to tickle your curiosity. And then um, I also really try to engage students in active learning. So I'd like to have lots of um, active learning ex experiences. So during the classes, um, there's always one critical thinking exercise that pops up at a sort of random time during the lecture. In my neuroscience class, I call that a brain teaser. And in my Bayesian inference class, it's a Bayesian brain boggler. Um, and it's a sort of think, pair, share, 15 minute or 10 minute exercise. And those are marked exercises as well. Um, and then I also give weekly homework assignments in all my classes. And um, yeah, I have, I, I try to make learning opportunities really abound in my classes. So at almost every stage there's some learning opportunity for the students to, to, to get engaged. So for example, in um, my websites, I maintain my own websites, I don't use Avenue. I, I program them myself. Um, and I have passwords for the websites, but it's not just one password, it's a randomly selected password that changes every five minutes. And it's a sort of, cl there, a clue is given, it has something to do with the course concept. And the student has to enter the right password to be able to get in. So even just logging onto the password to the website is a learning experience. I give them the list of passwords at the beginning, so they, they never get locked out. In my neuroscience class, like we take a stretch, it's a three hour night class. So I take a break, but also I have a stretch where they can get up and just do a free form stretch I call a neuromuscular juncture. But it's also a learning opportunity because after they stretch free form for a little bit, I show them a slide up on the screen that highlights a certain region of their brain and they have to use that part of the brain in their stretch. So like if it's part of the motor cortex and the hand representation, they have to incorporate, if it's a left motor cortex, their right hand in the stretch, that sort of thing. I want to sort of hone their critical thinking skills. So regardless of what I'm teaching, my hope is that they leave the class being sort of sharper, deeper thinkers than when they came in, just in general. And then the second thing, of course, is I want to give them a real deep appreciation for the course content, for the topic of the course. I'm not just a teacher, I love learning. And of course, as a researcher, as a scientist, I'm always learning new things. Um, but I also like learning things completely outside of, the, of, of academia. So um, one thing I've been doing, if I had to choose one, I guess it's kind of unusual, is I've, I have a, an espresso machine at home. And I've really been getting into pulling my own lattes and you know, making latte art, free form latte art, which is, can be really quite beautiful. So I've, I've really kind of immersed myself in that and it's kind of a form of sensory motor learning really.